All right. We're in section 1.3, where we're going to be able to write equations. Uh, writing equations uh, requires you at times to be able to translate verbal phrases. Uh, it allows you to be able to write expressions using those verbal phrases in the verbal model. And in this section, we're also going to be able to find a unit rate. So over here, this is a chart. And this is the chart, which is considered the verbal model. In mathematics, when we talk about something, it usually is going to be one of these four categories, either addition, subtraction, multiplication, or division. And below, I have a series of collage of terms. And these terms are going to fit in one of these four categories. So if I look at sum, sum is addition. So I would put sum in addition. Max that out. If I look at less than, less than is with subtraction. I'll cross that out. Plus, so that would be under addition. Product, product would be under multiplication. And cross that out. Times would also be under multiplication. So cross that off. Quotient. Excuse me. Uh, that would be under division. So quotient. Total. That would be under addition. So total cost of your grocery list, something like that. More than would also be addition. Divided into would be obviously division. Minus, that would be subtraction. Divided by would also be division. Increased by would be addition. Decreased by would be subtraction. Multiplied by would be multiplication. Difference would be subtraction. Of would be multiplication, and per would be division, kind of like miles per gallon. And did I cover all of them? Yeah, it looks like I did. So this list is going to help you kind of determine when you're reading different phrases how you're going to write a specific expression. Another term that you're going to see is the quantity of. So anytime you hear the words the quantity of, you're going to put parentheses around it. So if you look something like this, like say I have 2 times the quantity of 3 plus 5. So if I were to write that on words, it would be 2 times the quantity of 3 plus 5. Okay? So we're going to take a look at some examples and we're going to translate verbal phrases into expressions. First thing I have is the quotient of 7 and a number n decreased by 10. So the quotient of 7, remember that quotient is division, so it's divided by a number n and it's going to be decreased, which is subtraction, by 10. All right. Looking at B, I got 3 more than the product of Y and negative 8. 
So I have three more than is addition. And then the product of is going to be multiplication. And the multiplication comes from negative 8 times y. You could also have it as 3 plus negative 8 times y like this. Both answers are perfectly acceptable. For C, I have the sum of the cube of a number G and 100. So, telling us that the cube is the number G, so it's going to be 3, and cube is to the third power, and we have sum, so that becomes plus 100. Okay? And I need some more room for this one. So I look at D, it says the quotient when the quantity of the total of a number x and 12 is divided by the quantity of 2 and a number x. So quotient tells me that this is going to be a division problem. But before that, I have the quantity of, so remember that's in parentheses, so it's the quantity of the total, which means inside of these parentheses is going to be addition. And what is being added is x and 12. And then the divided by is right here by the quantity of. So again, I got another parentheses. And it's going to be 2 plus x. Okay. Now we're going to take a look at some word problems in order to uh, get a better understanding of, of other types of expressions and being able to solve those problems accordingly. So this example, I have the length of a rectangular rug is three times its width. Write an expression for the area and perimeter of the rug. It says, find the area of the rug if the width is four feet. What can we do to help us get started? Well, anytime I see a word problem and it allows me to draw a picture, I'm going to draw a picture. So here is my rectangular rug. And they're telling us that, it, that the length is three times the width. So, for example, if the width was one, the length would be three. So, but we don't know what the width is, so we're going to give it a value of x and the length we're going to give it a value of 3x because whatever the width is is always going to be three times as big so area of a rectangle is length times width and the perimeter which is the sum of all the sides so it's going to be length plus length, plus width, plus width. You could also say 2L plus 2W. So if I were to write an expression of this using the, trying to find the area and the perimeter, 3X would be my L, and X would be my W. So I'm just going to replace that with 3X times x and if I were to combine those together it's going to be 3x squared so that's how I'd write that expression if I were to write it here as perimeter it's going to be 3x plus 3x plus x plus x all of them are like terms so I get to combine them 3x plus 3x is 6x 6x plus x is 7x, 7x plus x is 8x. And the last thing they want us to do, they want us to find the area when the width is 4. So I'm going to replace this x with 4 feet. So I'm going to say that's 3 multiplied by 4 squared. And because of order of operation, 4 squared makes it 16. So 3 times 16 gives me 48 square feet. All right. If we look over here, we 
We have an example. You are driving on a road trip with three of your friends. Each friend agrees to drive the same distance on the, of this road trip. Write an expression that represents each person's distance uh, driven. So sometimes I think this would be a really hard problem, especially for one, they don't tell you the distance that you traveled in the road trip. So what might be helpful is giving yourself uh, an example. So like say the road trip was, for instance, you know, 500 miles, for example. So how many friends? It's three, yourself and three other friends, so there's four people. That means that you divide that 500 miles into four different lanes, and so each person would drive, you know, 125 miles. But since we don't know what this is, we're going to represent the total miles of the road trip as X. Not, not necessarily 500 miles. It could be anyone. So whatever the distance of the road trip is, you're going to divide it by 4. And that is going to be the expression that represents each person's uh, driving distance or their turn to drive. Uh, another thing we're going to look at is rates and unit rates. Uh, rate is a fraction that compares two quantities that measure in different units. Uh, unit rate is always going to be when the denominator is 1. So we're just going to take the, the top and multiply it by the bottom. It's as simple as that. Example we have right here, it says you buy a 64 ounce jug of organic juice for $5.12. Find the unit rate to the nearest cent. Alright? So, or to the nearest tenth. So, <clears throat> I want to figure out how much it is for one ounce of this juice. So, all I can say is write this as a ratio of $5.12 over. 64 ounces. So I can take 512 and divide it by 64, and that ends up giving me a result of 0 0.08. But, but they want it to the nearest tenth, so I have to get it to this value. And since 8 is larger than 5, it gets upgraded to 0 0.1 dollars per one ounce. So it's about 10 cents an ounce for this orange juice. Okay. Here's an example. Uh, it says you have a membership at a local gym for $40, which includes 10 swim passes. You must pay a fee for each swim pass after the 10th one. Two months ago, you paid $13.50 for three extra swim passes. Find your total cost for last month if you bought seven extra passes. This should be swim passes. I'm sorry. Swim pass. All right. So the total cost. First thing we have to do is put in membership. Membership was forty dollars, and they give you ten passes. Those are free. But they're asking you how much it is uh, for seven extra passes. Well, you knew that you bought three of them for thirteen fifty. I want to figure out how much it is for one pass. And I can figure that out by taking the 1350 and dividing it by 3. So if I take 1350 divided by 3, this is telling me that one pass will cost $4.50. So to figure out the cost of last month's total, I'm going to take the $40. And I'm going to add it. I'm going to take this $4.50 and multiply it by 7. So when I do that, I get a grand total of $31.50. And when I take 40 plus 
I get a total for this month of or last month of seventy one dollars and fifty cents. Okay. Last examples I have here, I want to be able to compare rates. And what I want to do is I want to see which rate is greater. Okay? So for example A, it says a um, dollar for five minutes, or dollar sixty for five minutes, or nineteen fifty for one hour. So I want to take and put the money on the top. I'm going to divide this by five minutes. And so I get 160 divided by five, and that gives me $0.32 over one minute. Okay? The trouble is, this is in minutes, and this is in hours. I have to keep it consistent, so I'm going to say that it's going to be $19.50 over 60 minutes, because one hour is equivalent to 60 minutes. So if I take 19.50 and divide it by 60, I get 0.325 hours in one minute. And the 0.325 is slightly larger, so the larger rate happens to be the 19.50 for one hour. For the second one, it says, it must be like somebody running or something like that, so it's like two miles in 15 minutes and 18 seconds or 3 miles in 24 minutes and 35 seconds. I'm curious which is the larger rate. So since I got minutes and seconds, I'm going to convert everything to seconds. So 15 minutes, if I multiply it by 60, which will give me 900 seconds, and I'm going to add it to 18. So this it's essentially going to be 918 seconds over 2 miles. And so if I take 918 divided by 2, I get 459 seconds per 1 mile. And in this case, I get 3.5 miles on the bottom. 24 times 60 is 1,440, add that to 35, so I get 1,475, take that 1,475, divide it by 3.5, and I get 421.43 seconds per one mile. Now the other side, this is faster, but the larger rate, the greater rate, happens to be this one. Okay. And that is being able to uh, write expressions. Hope this helps. Until next time.